physical digestion um, is the physical breakdown of large uh, food particles into smaller particles. So large food particles are broken down into smaller particles. It's just like crushing the food from big particles into smaller particles using energy. So the reason why this is happening so that you increase the surface area so that the chemicals or the enzymes can act upon this food very fast. And then you're saying that occurs during uh, uh, mastication, uh, churning. You find these ones uh, in, 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 in the stomach. It's peristalsis, during peristalsis. I want to talk about peristalsis when the food is here is going down. Yeah, we call it peristalsis. So in that period, you cannot, you cannot bring the food back. If the food has gone down, you cannot tell the food that go back. No, 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 no. It is just a rhythmic uh, contraction. It's, it's, it's automatic contraction and relaxation of the circular muscles. So the, the muscles, they contract as they push food uh, downwards. Uh, this is um, called uh, peristalsis. So peristalsis is a reflex action. It means that you don't have control over it. Uh, it's triggered by presence of food in the alimentary canal. And then this uh, is very important in transporting food and water uh, in the body. So uh, as food is going, you can find it in the esophagus, you can find it even in the, in, in the stomach. We, we find them there so that food can move in one uh, direction. This is an example of uh, peristalsis. Here, when the food is here, these muscles contract and then this one relax. When they, these ones contract, they push this food downwards. So these muscles cannot relax and this one is contract. That's why even if you're upside down, still the food will move in the one direction. It will move from the mouth and then goes to the stomach. So then now it, it moves, then the food moves downwards. So this kind of food in form of a ball, we call it a bolus. So now the food moves, it continues to move. As these muscles relax, when they relax, these ones contract, they work antagonistically. In a sense, we call it antagonistically, antagonistic muscles. When these ones uh, contract, this one relaxes and then the food is pushed downwards and then the food continues in that uh, direction. And when we talk about chemical digestion, it's a breaking down of large food uh, compounds into smaller food compounds using a uh, digestive enzyme. So here large food particles are broken into smaller food particles uh, we, uh, by the help of the digestive uh, enzymes. So the enzymes which you call the chemicals, that's why you say the, the chemical digestion, the, the enzymes they help in breaking down this large food into smaller food. When you talk about large food, it may not be necessarily be large, but is large when uh, compared to the those particles which or nutrients which are absorbed into the bloodstream. Because when you break, when you eat, when you chew, you break down into from big particles into smaller particles. So now the smaller particles, those particles which you have broken down into, are the what you call now the large. They become large when it comes to digest, the chemical digestion. And then those particles are broken down into smaller particles, which, uh, which can be absorbed now uh, by the what? Into the bloodstream. And uh, what do they do? Yes. Um, we say that you have different um, groups of enzymes. Uh, we have um, which kind of food do they act upon. And then uh, the end products of um, uh, the food. And then uh, lastly, uh, which kind of pH or medium? Uh, we are saying that we have those ones uh, found in the saliva, that's the mouth, pancreatic, those ones are found in the duodenum. And then uh, intestinal, uh, those ones are found in small intestine, the, the ileum, the one which is coiled. Uh, if you remember the structure of um, uh, uh, digestive system. So this only act on, it means that carbohydrates uh, are being uh, digested in the, in the mouth, no stomach, no. And then duodenum, duodenum, and then the small intestine. So which substrate, we call it a substrate. We don't call it a food. No, we call it a substrate. Um, we have what you call carbohydrate, uh, which is starch. Sometimes we call it starch, but carbohydrates can also be in different forms. Then which pH uh, is likely to be uh, where these uh, enzymes are working is supposed to be slightly alkaline. The reason why these ones cannot work in the stomach is because the stomach of the pH is acidic. And then uh, what is the end product when you, you digest all the carbohydrates? You find out that glucose is the end product of uh, that food. Then you have the second category of, of proteins, um, which we call the proteases. Uh, we find protein digestion in the stomach. 
the pancreatic juice that is the duodenum and then you find it uh, in the intestinal uh, juices. Uh, this is the small intestine which is ileum. So which kind of uh, substrate is being uh, acted upon, which is, which is food, we don't call it food, I told you, uh, which substrate is protein. Uh, which kind of pH do they work in? They work in acidic medium that is in the stomach, and then they work in alkaline medium that is small intestine. That's why uh, you, you, these proteins can work in, in, in acidic and alkaline. That's why you can find them in the stomach and the small intestines as these ones. They also work in the alkaline medium. But um, they don't work in acidic medium. That's why you cannot find these in the stomach. You only find them in the small intestines. Then which end product, when you digest uh, proteins, uh, which end product is supposed to give you is supposed to give you what you call the amino acids or amino acids. The last group is um, lipase. The lipase, uh, these are lipids. Lipases are enzymes which act upon on lipids. So uh, carbohydrates, the proteases, and then the lipases. The word A E no 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 A S E means an enzyme, as we will see. You see uh, carbo. Hydrases, proteases, lipases. We will see. We will explain that um, as you continue with, with with the science. Okay, we are saying that uh, this one lipases. We find them uh, in the pancreatic juice and intestinal uh, juices. Pancreatic juice. Now here we are talking about the duodenum, and then intestinal juices. We are talking about the small intestine that is the ileum, the cold one. So uh, which substrate which is being acted upon? The substrate is uh, lipids, which you call the fats and oils. So it depends on whether it is coming from the plants or it's coming from uh, uh, the animals. So the pH, because uh, the duodenum and the small intestines, that is ileum, is, is, is alkaline, so they are supposed to also work in alkaline. What is the end product of the lipids? What is the end product of the fats? You get what you call glycerol and the fatty acids. You will see this one, or you did see this one in grade 10. Yeah, note, enzymes are very sensitive to change in the temperature. So they, they, are, they can be denatured if the temperature is too high. Then they are also sensitive to pH. That's why that uh, these, these enzymes, they have a specific pH uh, in which they are supposed to work in. And then hence uh, only work uh, in optimal temperature and pH ranges. That, that, that it works maybe from 3 to 5, that is acidic. Maybe from 8 to 10, that is alkaline. Or 7, that's neutral. Or, so, so, so they have a specific kind of pH they are supposed to work upon. They don't work in each and every pH. It. So what we have been trying to explain, this is a diagrammatic uh, uh, representation of what we have, uh, we, have, uh, we have tried to explain here. So uh, we are saying that uh, you see protein molecules is made up of many small uh, uh, amino acids. Remember, we said that when you break down the proteins, you produce what's called the amino acids. So when you break down using the enzyme proteases, we have different uh, proteases enzymes. We have pepsin, uh, trypsin, uh, those are proteases, yes? Uh, the the, the pe peptidases, all those are proteins. So they break down, they, then you get what you call the amino acids. Then you have the starch molecules is made up of many uh, glucose molecules. This one is made up of many glucose molecules. When you break down the starch molecule, you produce what you call glucose. And then which kind of enzymes are the high carbohydrates? Examples of carbohydrates, you have a lot. You have maltase, uh, you have um, the sucralase, and then the end product is glucose. Then you have the fat molecules is made up of uh, uh, fat acids and glycerol. This one, it looks like E. If you look at it, yeah, it looks like E. Eh? I call it E. Fat acids, and then this yellow part is the glycerol. So the, the enzyme is replaced. When you break it down, you produce what you call the, uh, the fat acids, and then you produce what you call the uh, glycerol. So uh, basically, that's it. And then let's look at... Now, after you have uh, broken down this food into smaller particles, then we go to another step of um, the process of digestion as absorption. So now we have got the final product of these uh, molecules. So what are the, the process? What is the process of um, absorption? How does it uh, take place? So number one, it takes place uh, mostly in the small intestine.
We saw that the small intestines, with small intestine, you find out that the food is basically, you find the final digestion of, of food in the small intestine. That is the ileum. Uh, live along the duodenum because duodenum is also an example of small intestine. But the ileum and uh, duodenum and ileum, you find them uh, that the final product is, is, is found there. And then absorption also takes place there. So small intestine is suitable for absorption due to the characteristics uh, below. We can ask you how is the small intestine suitable for carrying out absorption? It's long approximately six meter long so so that's why it is coiled if you look at uh, the small intestine uh, uh it's very long it is coiled yes yes uh, the small intestine is coiled yeah? is coiled like this yeah? it's coiled it's coiled so when, when it's coiled I, I think now you can see so that's why it is long so that it can increase the the surface area for absorption so number two uh, it's it, the walls contain transverse uh, transverse uh, folds um, transverse folds. So we we're gonna see it when we look at uh, the 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 the, uh, the inner wall has millions of finger-like projections called villi. So the villi uh, they protrude out. You're gonna look at the structure of a villas. If it's one, it's called a villus. If there are many, we call them uh, villi. We don't call them villuses. Uh -uh. We call them uh, villi. So it has millions of these finger-like projections so that it can increase the absorption of uh, this food. Each villus contains microvilli to further increase the surface area. This is the surface area for, for absorption. So even the small ones, they have small other uh, micro projections. So it means that the surface area, by the time the food passes all those folds, uh, uh, is supposed to be uh, at least uh, the important nutrients are supposed to be absorbed back to uh, the body. Then we are, here is a structure of, uh, uh, of a villas. So they, they, they are like this, but there are millions and millions. So structure of a villas, number one, uh, it has what you call uh, the capillaries, it has what you call uh, the lecture, uh, it has what you call the arterios, it has what you call the, 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 the venules. Okay, the, the, the venules are the, 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 the small veins, yes? When the vein breaks down or so branches, then uh, it, it becomes uh, small, or it becomes uh, small, it becomes venules. And then when the artery uh, break down like small branches of artery, then you call them atrios. So uh, then the vein, it, it, it combines back and then uh, it, it joins the big vein, which you call the vena cava. And then these on the arteries, as they bring blood uh, with, a, with, with a low level of nutrients, it comes like this, yes, you see, and then goes up, yes. You see this color is different from this color and then picks the nutrients. Now the nutrients starts to come in. They start to come into the blood and then the veins goes like this. You see the actual um, duct. This one, it is very important in absorption uh, or transportation of, of, of fat, fats. So the fats are being transported independently of, uh, of the blood. Adaptation of the villas for absorption. So if you look at this, what are some of the adaptations? It's supposed to have the, some of the adaptations uh, so that it can cut out the process of, 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 of absorption. Oh, I've not talked about the rupture. The epithelium is one cell thick, allowing nutrients to pass through quickly. Uh, so, so, so that's the meaning. Uh, it means that uh, if you look at it here, uh, it's one cell thick. Eh? The nutrients can cross and then they're already inside here. Just one cell thick, you see it. Yeah, it's just one cell thick, so it allows nutrients to cross very fast. Then number two, the goblet cell secrete mucus to ensure that absorption, uh, absorptive uh, surface is moist, and also nutrients to be uh, dissolved, uh, absorbed, and absorbed. So if you look at it, it, it has what you call the goblet cells. Yeah, you see the goblet cells. These goblet cells they produce the mucus so that now it is at least the surface is moist and the nutrients can be absorbed uh, very fast. And then number three, it has many mitochondria to supply energy 
for active uh, absorption of nutrients. So whenever we talk about uh, mitochondria, we are talking about energy. So this helps or it aids uh, in carrying out active transfusion. You studied the different ways in which substances um, cross the membrane, yes, uh, or the cell membrane. You said diffusion, you have uh, active transport, you have osmosis, actually first, even facilitated diffusion. So in this case, uh, nutrients are supposed to be, uh, some of them, they are supposed to be absorbed by active transport. And active transport is the movement of molecules from region of, from region of low concentration to the region of high concentration against a concentration gradient. So since it is from low to high, it's, it's going to be having a, a, high, um, a high amount of energy which is needed for it to uh, move from low uh, level of the hill to a high level of the hill. So mitochondria is very important in the production of energy. That's microvilli for further increase of the surface area. So the, the, the virus is divided into other small parts so that uh, the surface area uh, for absorption can increase. And then lastly, it has what called the lymph vessel called the lecture uh, in each uh, villus which absorbs and transports our lipids. Uh, you'll find out that I say that uh, this lymph this uh, lacto duct, it is very important in absorbing the fats, and then the fats, they follow the lymph duct, and then they go to uh, uh, other parts of the body, or to the left part of the, the chest. It joins there, and then it joins the heart so for further pumping. Number one, we say that it has epithelium, is one cell thick. Why is it, why is it important to, to, to allow nutrients to move uh, fast or quickly? You talk about the fact, the, 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 the fact or the, the part, and then you tell us uh, the function of it. Just goblet cells, or how about goblet cells? Secret mucus. What's the function of the mucus? To moist and dissolves um, uh, the nutrients, or to allow the nutrients to be dissolved and absorbed quickly also. Uh -huh. Then another, just mitochondria. What's the function of mitochondria? Produce energy. What's the function of the energy for active absorption? Microvilli, uh, what, how about microvilli? It increases the surface area uh, for absorption. And then it has uh, the lymph uh, vessel. How about it? it? This lymph vessel is called lacto. Or it has the lacto duct, which uh, absorbs it, uh, lipids and transports it. So uh, transport of, of, of amino acids and, and glucose. Actually, transportation, how does it uh, look like? So you start with the amino acids and the glucose are uh, absorbed into the blood capillaries of the villi in the small intestines. Okay, once they are absorbed, what happens? The capillaries join uh, together to form a large venue uh, of uh, venues. Uh, these are small veins. Yes, to form a hepatic portal vein uh, that transports um, amino acids and glucose to the liver. So it, it transports this to the what? To the river. And then uh, glucose and amino acids through the hepatic portal vein to the heart. And then lastly, uh, but nonetheless, the river converts the excess uh, glucose uh, into glycogen, which is, is stored. And then the excess amino acids are deaminated. It means that when you eat too many eggs, you don't benefit. You only benefit if the eggs are few. Why? Because the eggs are made up of uh, amino acids, the protein. So what we do is we just deaminate de it and then we excrete it as a uh, waste product. Next time we will start with the